it's like just listen as I disengage and engage the plugin. It's like the mix goes back and then as I engage it, it just comes back. You understand? Like it just comes forward. Like listen, listen, listen. Come on. Yo, what's good is your boy Signature. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me. Now today I'm going to show you how I get my songs to always compete with the pro level major label artist songs on Spotify, major distribution or streaming platforms. If you have issues with your songs that you're not happy with, if the vocals are a problem, fix them during the recording session, during the mixing session, but not the mastering session, okay? When you approach, just like mixing, when you approach mastering as well, you must first have a vision for what you see your song turning out to be, what you want your song to make a person feel when they listen to it, and how to play around with your mixing or your mastering to enhance those elements that will allow or enable a person to feel the way you want them to feel when they listen to your song. Let's play the song. Me, myself and I Don't need nobody else to jump Me for the ride Hurt so many times Played by the same niggas that thought had me for life Me, myself and Alright, so this song for me is a banger Classical trap, club banger However, the contents of it is more so a rap and hip-hop in terms of the vocal so i want the artist to stay up front the artist to remain heard and have that elegant just better than life feel and sound to it okay so now let's open up uh, the studio rack i chose to use it because of its flexibility so the first plugin I won't really talk much about is the NLS bus because I feel it's an optional plugin. Put it in, don't put it in. Uh, it's this plugin. I just chose the mic uh, studio emulation tone because I felt it was how it was doing good for the song. Let me put it like that. But you can live this one. The major, major, major uh, change starts here. So add an EQ, and I always get the question as to EQ before a compressor or compress before an EQ? And my answer to that is this. Personally, I like to ensure that whenever I send a signal to a, a compressor, I want to make sure that that signal is first dealt with in terms of removing any unwanted uh, frequencies. That means harsh frequencies, boxy frequencies, anything that I can deal with before sending it to the compressor because I don't want the compressor to take a sound that has unwanted frequencies and end up enhancing and bringing forward those unwanted frequencies. So I like to deal with those frequencies and remove them first. Then I send to the compressor. That's my thought process. That's what I did here. You typically don't want an 808 and a kick to be hitting in the sides, okay? It just muddies the track and just takes up unwanted space so i had to do that cut and then i came here i just did a lot of uh, notch downs cutting down all the unwanted frequencies such as for example this one or also this boxy tone here so this is all about going in here but the trick that i can give you is that Make sure when you choose an EQ that it's an EQ that allows you, that allows for mid-side processing. Make sure that that very same EQ also does uh, dynamic work. So make sure it's a dynamic EQ that allows for mid-side processing, basically. And then when it comes to sniffing down the problematic frequencies, I always see a lot of people doing this and just hovering around like this. And most of if not all the frequencies are going to sound harsh unnecessarily. So I'm against doing that. I like to just create here and then take this very like bell and sweep with it on zero dB level. So don't boost, don't cut, just move with it like this. That way I get a more accurate uh, preview of what's happening in that specific frequency band that I'm hovering around. Okay? We're gonna do a quick A and B. Listen to the vocal. Me, myself and I don't need nobody else to jump me for the ride. 
it just breathes more it sounds more open and the beat sounds slightly more tighter in the low end which is what i was going for good and then now that i've dealt with all of the unwanted frequencies now i go straight to the master bus compressor in this case i'm using the ssl compressor and man this is a classic legendary compressor for a reason okay however i have to first state that it gets a bad rap for over overly squashing the dynamics of songs so avoid over compressing with that try to maybe stick within the range of like a 2 2.5 gain reduction that's where i like to have it sitting so luckily with the new version of it it also has a mix knob here like you can see i have the mix on 85 so i chose this mastering preset and i pr i just played with um the threshold and the attack i left the release on auto and i did my makeup gain just to make sure that I keep the, the, the loudness matching so that I don't get fooled by the loudness to think that it's sounding good. That's pretty much it here. Okay, let's do an a, quick A and B. Me, myself and I, don't need nobody else to join me for the ride. Woo! Listen to how it hugs the low end at the same time, just slightly touching the the upper mids and the high frequencies on that vocal just to further just sort of bring those two slightly closer to like okay let me glue this thing come on man come on come on so because i had intent before i started loading the plugins i knew that for me to do what i want to do i had to use the studio rack because it's going to allow me to to do that thing easily and that thing is this I did a multi-band split here and then I, you can see pretty much where the frequencies cross and I added a saturator plugin to say saturate only from like 500 hertz going up which is like the upper mids to the highs because I wanted just to bring about presence and bring those elements slightly forward and allow them to breathe and just create a bit more separation with them, okay? Now, listen to me a and B this thing. Me, myself and I don't need nobody else to join me for the ride. Uh. Hurt so many times, played by the same niggas that thought had me for life. Me, myself and I don't need nobody. It's like just listen as I disengage and engage the plugin. It's like the mix goes back and then as I engage it, it just comes back. You understand? Like it just comes forward. Like listen, 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 come on. Me, myself and I don't need nobody else to join me for the ride. Ooh. Ah. Now this I think out of all the plugins, this is one where the difference is like night and day. You can literally hear and feel what it's doing to the signal, okay? I messed around with the depth, the harmonics, and then I pushed slightly with the drive. This is not a specific preset. It's the default setting. I messed with the depth, harmonics, the drive, and I also played with the shape slightly a bit. Now, don't worry about cramming these numbers. I'm going to have this entire studio rack preset in the description for you to download and play with it for free just listen to the decision making behind each and every plugin then you're going to take the settings and play with them later on and hit me in the comments and let me know how they work for you okay i've already enhanced everything that i wanted to enhance i've brought the vocal forward tightened up the bass slightly I still felt like, okay, I didn't want to have these things sitting separately from each other. So I wanted to now try and tame some of the transients at the same time, attempting to further glue the entire signal together or the entire elements together, which is why I brought this plugin, the CLA-2A. I don't typically bring this plugin for a mastering session, but for some reason it just called out like, use me, you understand? So with this, I just play with the pick reduction and then I balance the gain just to make up the gain and match it up properly. I'm going to do a quick A and B. There's not much to explain with this really. I only played with this two knobs and then brought down uh, the mix knob to like 90%. Let's preview. Me, myself and I don't need nobody else to join me for the ride. Listen to the vocal. Heard so many times played by the same niggas that thought had me for life. I'm happy with this and then for precaution to have the low end slightly tighter and more mono and to bring forward 
separation and presence uh, in the stereo image when it comes to the upper mid frequencies, the instruments sitting in that frequency band, and the vocal as well. So I brought in the ozone image, and that's exactly what I did here. From zero to like uh, 135 hertz, I pulled it down mono. This is what's sitting in that frequency band. So it's mostly just um, the low end of like the vocal, kick, and bass, right? So I have those elements more mono. And then I came here to like 2.5K till like 10K. So I wanted to bring forward that and at the same time create more separation and worth to it. Listen to what's sitting here. So you can hear that the vocals and uh, the hi-hats. So I want to bring just those elements slightly forward, mainly the vocal. So that's what I did with this band. And we're going to do an A and B of the entire plugin. Me, myself and I don't need nobody else to join me for the ride. Hurt so many times, played by the same niggas that thought had me for life. Very subtle, but if you listen to it, especially the upper mids, you can hear how it's touching it, okay? After the step, I was literally done with my mastering. I was happy with where everything was sitting. The last maybe major step that was lacking was volume now. Now I needed to bring forward the loudness. A lot of people don't understand the importance of like makeup gain with each and every plugin. Let me A and B the entire chain from the NLS bus till the ozone imager, listen to how the volume doesn't change. As much as the whole mix sounds more open, present, and just tight in the low end and everything, listen to how the overall volume doesn't change. There's just added clarity to the whole sound, but the volume stays the same. Listen. Me, myself, and I don't need nobody else to join me for the ride. Hurt so many times. I hope you heard that. I always start with like a clapper. The reason I bring forward a clipper first is because with a clipper, you can it, it allows you to increase the perceived loudness of a song, but at the same time, have lower uh, dB's value in terms of loudness. So the song sounds like it's loud when it's actually not as loud. So it gives you more headroom for you to take that signal and then throw it into a, a limiter to then further increase the volume. Now, I, I chose the classic clipper because this is just like the Zeus god of clipper plugins, I'm telling you. So here I only wanted to go for like um, a dB or less than a dB gain reduction, nothing really heavy. So these are the settings obviously, and then let's play it. Me, myself and I, don't need nobody else to join me for the ride. Hurt so many times, played by the same niggas that thought had me for life. Like it just beefs everything up it just brings everything forward it just increases the overall perceived loud like okay. ah, ah. and then the last plugin is the fab filter pro l my favorite favorite limiter in the whole wide universe okay this is me bringing it in and then i chose the hip-hop mastering rs preset and i just messed with the threshold I played around with slightly played around with the release and attack and of course you must always engage your true peak because you want to ensure that it shows you the exact true peak of your song so you know that your song will not clip as it travels different mediums or digital digital platforms make sure that you engage true peak
okay? And for safety precautions, safety reasoning that I can explain on a different video, make sure that your true peak value is minus one or minus 1.1 just to be extra safe, okay? And then here I, of course, engage the oversampling, the dither to 24 beds. That's pretty much it. And then I'm going to preview everything before we close up the video. Turn down your, your, your speakers, turn down your, your, your headphones. It's about to get loud. Here we go. Me, myself and I, don't need nobody else to jump me for the ride. Hurt so many times, played by the same niggas that thought had me for life. Me, myself and I, don't need nobody else to jump. Oh, shit. Listen. <laughs> Then now, before I close off the video, always have a meter plugin to check your levels. Uh, my rule of thumb personally is that the true peak, I like to keep it at around negative 1.1, negative one true peak. The RMS, I like to play around minus 11 to minus nine RMS level. Uh, when it comes to LUFS, I like to play around minus 12 to minus... 10 although i know that a lot of digital platforms request that you give it like minus 14 lufs personally i like to go slightly louder i'm fine with them pulling me down but i'd hate for my song to be softer than any pro level songs to a point where it's evident okay so let's play the song and check the readings me myself and i don't need nobody else to jump me for the ride beautiful lufs is sitting at minus 10 uh the loudness range is 8.7 uh 9 which is loud like that that's on the loud side of the spectrum okay so i'm happy with that because none of the dynamics are sounding squashed for me so i'm happy that i've achieved these two numbers without over processing and over squashing the beat and that's because i've taken care of what can give off uh, that passive loudness during the mixing session okay that's why if you can check again with all the steps we went through we were barely touching the knobs we we're just doing subtle moves that's because <clears throat> the song was already in loudness potential okay i was just enhancing things right not adding frequencies that are not there just enhancing okay and then the true peak you can see it's sitting at a negative 1.1 which is beautiful so i hope you learned something i hope uh, you you take some of this and you implement it on your next master i know this video might have been a, a bit all over the place i'm gonna do another video where i uh mix with you step by step so you can understand properly my thought process behind this but i decided to just share this one because it came to me mid session as I was mixing. I was like, yo, no, no, no. The way I did the situation is actually something I would love to share. Then I decided to, you know what, let me share this and also share the preset in the description. So I hope you learned something. I hope you like it. Don't forget to thumbs up the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Let's push these numbers, okay? It's your boy Signature. Catch you in the next one. I am out of here. Peace.